Hi there! Welcome to the fourth episode of the design and construction of a curve tracer. After building in the previous episode the waveform generator around the Arduino Nano, we will now take care of the level adjustment element, which is the block that will be able to invert individually the sign of the signals, plus and minus, and will provide them in a range between 0 volt and 15 volt. Let's jump into this interesting topic with no further ado. Here is the schematic for the level adjustment for both the ramp and the ladder signals. The first thing we want to do is to provide the negative signals with respect to the ground. That way, we can choose with a simple switch if we want to use the positive or the negative ones, depending on the kind of component under test. To invert each signal, we need to use two inverting amplifiers with a gain of 1. The LM358 on the left, marked as U1, provides two op-amps that we can use for this purpose. The signals are applied to the inverting inputs of the op-amps through 10K resistors. The feedback loop of both op-amps are also made with 10K resistors, which provide the required gain of 1. Capacitors C3 and C4, also in the feedback loop, are there to avoid unwanted oscillations of the amplifiers at high frequencies. The output of the amplifiers are each routed through a separate switch that allows us to extract either the positive signal directly from the input or the negative signal from the output of the amplifiers. The selected signals go through a potentiometer that allows us to adjust at will the level of both in a range between 0V and plus minus 5V. The signals at the cursor of the two potentiometers are then sent to the non-inverting input of the two op-amps available in the LM7332 IEC. The choice of this different op-amp is due to its capability of providing a high output current which will turn useful for those components under test that require it. In particular, the LM7332 provides an output current of up to 70 mA versus the 10-20 mA of the LM358. The difference doesn't seem much, but it will be enough to test almost any kind of small signal components. Here we have to clarify that our curve tracer is not meant to take measurements on power components, in fact, usually we don't even need to make that kind of measurements for such devices. Moving on, we can observe that the two op-amps are connected in a non-inverting amplifier configuration with a gain of about 3, necessary to amplify the signals up to plus minus 15 volt. Let's now take a look at the prototype from last episode, completed with today's circuitry. There are new components on the front panel, along those already in place from last time. Here is the selector for the number of steps of the ladder signal. This one is the switch that selects the positive or negative version of the ramp, and this other one does the same for the ladder. On the right side we have two potentiometers to set the level of the signals. The one on the left is for the ramp, and the one on the right is for the ladder. Both signals can be adjusted in a range between 0 volt and plus or minus 15 volt. On this small breadboard, I installed the LM7332, which, being a very small SMD component, had to be mounted on a breakout board I made specifically for it. If you are interested on this breakout board, please let me know in the comments and I will provide you with the files to build your own. Here instead is the rest of the circuitry, which now comprises the new pump IC from the schematic we just examined. Let me now turn on the power supply and let's take a look at the signal outputs on the oscilloscope. Adjusting the trigger to stabilize the signals, and I am also keeping the signals on top of each other so we can easily see when I switch them from positive to negative and we can also better see their synchronization between each other. We can still change the number of steps on the ladder using the circuitry from the previous episode. 
But now, we can also invert the polarity of the signals. Here we have the negative version of the ramp, and this is the negative version of the ladder. And of course, we can set them up in all possible pair of orientations. Finally, we can now adjust the level of each signal individually. Here is that done for the ramp, both for the positive and for the negative orientation. And here is how it works for the ladder, on the positive side and on the negative side. At this level of completion, the device should already be able to test simple components, like diodes and transistors. However, we still need to add some extra components in the test circuit to make voltage and current visible on the oscilloscope screen. Next time, we will work on the voltage to current converter, which will allow us to have precise reference currents for a meaningful tracing of those components that require a control current rather than a control voltage, like the transistors. I'll see you in the next video, and as usual, happy experiments!